pulling off an amazing reveal is challenging for virtually all storytellers, no matter if they write books, TV shows, movies, plays, or of course, video games. Now, we're not talking about the bad video game twists here either, like 2009's Bionic Commander reboot connecting Nathan Spencer's mechanical arm to his dead wife, or the incestuous and illusory truths that conclude 2021's 12 Minutes. Those were jaw-dropping for the wrong reasons. Instead, we're delving into the narrative surprises that left players frozen in place in brilliant and fitting ways. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are the 10 video game reveals that stopped you dead. Spoilers are ahead, so beware. Number 10. Elizabeth is Anna DeWitt. Bioshock Infinite. Regardless of whether it's superior to the first entry in the series, 2013's time-bending Bioshock Infinite concludes with similarly mind-blowing disclosures regarding the real identities of the two major characters. Learning that protagonist Booker DeWitt is actually an alternate universe version of main antagonist Comstock is certainly startling and significant. Yet it's the other confession, Comstock's rebellious adopted descendant Elizabeth is Booker's long-lost daughter Anna that hits like a real punch in the gut. After all, Booker's entire cause for going to the floating city of Columbia is to find Elizabeth, as the mysterious Lutest twins tell him that if he brings them the girl, he'll quote, wipe away the debt. On the surface, it seems like a simple way for him to erase his gambling responsibilities, but by the end, it takes on a deeper meaning since said liabilities led to Comstock taking infant Anna and unintentionally severing her finger in the first place. Thus, Booker and Anna's relationship becomes increasingly complicated and touching as Bioshock Infinite progresses, leading to a bittersweet finale in which multiple Elizabeths from multiple timelines watch Booker drown in order to prevent any version of him from becoming Comstock. Number 9. Abby's Motivation The Last of Us Part 2 The Last of Us Part 2 has a number of astonishing moments whose impact, even with the controversial leaks, couldn't be fully anticipated due to their graphic nature and or shifts to the storyline and characterizations. Obviously, the brutal slaying of Joel by Allie and her crew during the initial hour was a heartbreaking and visceral. Not only is it unforgivingly explicit and ruthless, but it also places Ellie on her tragic, vengeful path. However, it's the subsequent revelation of why Abby did what she did that was the real mind-blowing moment. As shown in a flashback that illustrates what Abby was thinking when she committed the murder, the Firefly surgeon that Joel executed at the end of the first game was Abby's father, Jerry, who had mixed feelings about what he was doing and seemed to be an all-around good person. Suddenly, we must reevaluate all the violence and hate that's to find Ellie, since she's essentially trying to kill Abby for the same reason Abby killed Joel. That moral ambiguity makes both characters simultaneously heroic and villainous, while giving Joel's inciting choice more tear-jerking complexity. Number 8. The boss can be trusted. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Chronologically, Metal Gear Solid 3, which takes place in 1964, kickstarts the whole delightfully convoluted saga. That's probably why it's getting the full remake treatment, hopefully in the near future, instead of the original and or Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. A major reason behind why it's so adored is its moving tale, particularly the implication early on that star Big Boss's former mentor, the boss, is working alongside central bad guy, Colonel Volgan. Accordingly, it's assumed that she's betrayed Big Boss and the United States of America by defecting to the USSR. Once they engage in their last battle at the end of the game, however, players are treated to arguably the most emotional scene in any Metal Gear Solid Adventure. Rather than become a traitor to her country, fellow spy and romantic interest Ava eventually divulges that the boss was ordered to bring back the philosopher's legacy by infiltrating Volgan's camp to gain his trust and any intel that she could. She allowed herself to be perceived as a conspirator and consequently be killed to protect America. Number 7. Odin's Ultimate Trick God of War Ragnarok. Although he's not as visually monstrous or physically imposing as, well, any of the preceding God of War enemies, Norse Allfather Odin is captivatingly wicked due to his disarming charm and manipulative genius. Aside from trying to fool Atreus into being disloyal to Kratos, as well as abusing his family and the citizens of Asgard, one of the worst things Odin's ever done is imprison sympathetic Iso deity Tyr for adopting a peaceful mindset and no longer wanting to wreak havoc on people. That's why it's so rewarding and endearing to finally rescue Tia and then spend dozens of hours with him in God of War Ragnarok. In addition to offering invaluable advice, he bonds with Kratos, Atreus, and the rest of the team. Yet, 
it was all a trick. Upon accidentally calling Atreus Loki and sparking the suspicion of dwarven blacksmith Brock, Tyr transforms into Odin, stabs Brock, and holds Atreus hostage until he's given the Mask of Creation. It's an exceptionally clever and disconcerting ploy that demonstrates how Odin's always been one, or two or three to be fair, steps ahead of Kratos and company. Fortunately, the real Tyr can still be saved during the post-game. Number six. Hollow Children, Binary Domain. Although it garnered mostly positive reviews, sci-fi third-person shooter Binary Domain sold poorly, so it's among the most overlooked games of the seventh generation. Featuring the sort of body horror that fans of the Tetsuo movies, as well as David Cronenberg's filmography, should love, its tale of man fusing with machine in a post-apocalyptic Japan is a grotesquely dismaying, yet relevant warning for modern times. Speaking of horrifying moments, there's a scene in which players see the full scope of what it's like to learn that you're a hollow child. That is, an android who looks, thinks, and feels like a person. After all, the man in question thought he was 100% human, and why wouldn't he? So witnessing him discover his mutilated and semi-robotic face in the reflection of someone's sunglasses is disturbing to say the least. From there, he endures abject terror, cruelty, and hopelessness until he fights back before taking his own life. You can't help but be frozen in place until it's over. Number five, Treacherous Tim Braid. As already alluded to on this list, morality is sometimes subjective and multifaceted. Thus, the character can be the hero and the villain of the story at the same time, if there are numerous perspectives through which to view them. Few titles examine that duality better than beloved indie puzzle platformer Braid. For most of the playthrough, central figure Tim thinks he's overcoming dozens of trials and tribulations to rescue a princess from a nefarious knight or monster. It's not clear what Tim's relationship is to her, but judging by how panicked she looks, as well as how frantically she runs through the stages, it appears that she's scared to death of the night and that Tim is on the right track. That is until the last level, where the inversion of time also inverts the storyline, which shows that the princess has been fighting to escape Tim and be saved by the night the whole time. Based on clues and other information strewn throughout the journey, it's easy to assume that Tim is the princess's scorned yet regretful ex-lover who's mistreated her in the past and refuses to accept that she's moved on with the night. Number four, not entirely a remake. Final Fantasy VII Remake. Remaking any acclaimed property, let alone one of the most treasured RPGs of all time, is inherently risky because fans are often skeptical, if not outraged, about even the smallest changes to what they hold near and dear. It's no wonder then why Final Fantasy VII Remake was met with a wide range of reactions when it was announced in 2015. Above all else, devotees wondered if it would be a faithful recreation of the 1997 classic or if it would deviate drastically from what its predecessor did. The answer? would end up being a bit of both. By expanding the Midgar section into its own full-length quest, Square Enix included much more backstory alongside various revisions. Even so, the superlative shock comes at the end, when it's revealed that the entire narrative is taking place in a different timeline. For instance, two major characters who die in the original continuity, Zack and Aerith, are now alive, and Sephiroth's actively trying to challenge fate. Plus, the whispers pop up at specific times to ensure that new paths open up and history doesn't completely repeat itself. Let's hope 2024's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth maintains that inventiveness. Number three, the cake is a lie. Portal. Similar to how Atlas slash Frank Fontaine is initially assumed to be helping the protagonist of Bioshock, GLaDOS, genetic life form and disk operating system, seems to be a friendly aid to Shell in Portal. Particularly, GLaDOS is quite useful in figuring out how to solve all the puzzles in the Aperture Science Enrichment Center, all the while winning over Shell with witty meta humor and other comical comments, although most of them are insults. If that weren't enough, she even promises Shell cake if she completes all her objectives. And who would say no to that? Well, as it turns out, and as countless memes have reminded us over the last 15 years, the cake and everything we thought we knew about their bond is a lie. Why? Because the program becomes malevolent as Portal reaches its conclusion, and the challenges get increasingly difficult and malicious. Eventually, the player discovers a wall with various bits of graffiti, including that famous phrase, that suggests the AI's ongoing deceitfulness and ultimate goal of luring Shell into her fiery trap. That's not to say that the dessert doesn't exist, as Shell 
Shell defeats GLaDOS and subsequently discovers a Black Forest cake is indeed within the facility. Number 2. Shady Shepherd, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 There's no denying that 2009's Modern Warfare 2 has one of the best campaigns in the series. It's got loads of varied locations, intriguing plot points, and trademark over-the-top set pieces that keep you enthralled across its short but sweet duration. Of course, it also houses perhaps the most stunning, if not generation-defining reveal in any of the titles. It turns out that your boss in Task Force 141, General Shepard, helped Russian terrorist Vladimir Makarov fulfill his mission of attacking the US and Europe to instigate World War III. Upon arriving at the Georgia-Russian border, your character, Sergeant Gary Roach Sanderson and Simon Ghost Riley, hand Shepard the DSM. Rather than congratulate them, Shepard shoots both men and leaves them for dead. Backed by a sorrowful orchestral soundtrack, it's a harrowing and infuriating scene. At the same time, Captains John Price and John Soap McTavish are betrayed by Shepard's men in Afghanistan. Understandably, they hunt him down, with Soap ultimately killing Shepard by throwing a knife at him while he fights Price. Really, has revenge felt that good? Number 1. Jefferson's Horrifying Hobby Life is Strange The original Life is Strange was a surprisingly engaging, authentic, and heartfelt entry into the episodic coming-of-age adventure subgenre. From its relatable depictions of adolescence and high school life, to its examinations of love, friendship, parent-child bonds, and destiny, it's a profound journey that's light-hearted yet also devastatingly grim. No aspect embodies that latter quality better than the truth about who's been kidnapping, abusing, photographing, and killing young girls, including Chloe Price's missing buddy slash romantic interest, Rachel Amber, within the seemingly idyllic Arcadia Bay. At the end of episode 4, Chloe and heroine Max are investigating a scrapyard after finding pictures of said crimes and Rachel's remains. They think they'll be meeting up with their condescending classmate, Nathan Prescott, but it's photography instructor Mark Jefferson who guns down Chloe and injects Max with an anesthetic. As he explains at the start of episode 5, he's been doing these nefarious deeds because he's, quote, obsessed with the idea of capturing that moment innocence evolves into corruption. It's a sickening twist, especially since it leads to some really unsettling scenes in involving Jefferson holding Max, as well as the adversarial Victoria Chase hostage. That is the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section which video game reveal stopped you dead, especially if it's one we might have missed out on our list. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can come say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald, but make sure you stay tuned to us here for plenty more gaming goodness.